views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. It is a pleasure to have you join us on this beautiful afternoon. We trust that you and your loved ones are well and staying safe. In today's Bejas Fireside Chat conversation, we welcome the president and CEO of Sobro, also known as the South Bronx Overall Economic Development, a multifaceted organization addressing all the needs of the community from housing, youth development, and small businesses. Please join me in welcoming Latina Trailblazer and Puerto Riqueña Lourdes Zapata. Lourdes, thank you so much for joining us today. Buenas tardes, buenas tardes. Thank you so much for having me. Really pleased to be here. It is an honor to have you, Lourdes, and thank you so much uh, for joining us on this afternoon. Now, Lourdes, tell us more about yourself and what it is that you do. Puerto Riqueña extraordinaire. I was born and raised in the Bronx uh, <laughs> from a family that came from Cabo Rojo, Puerto Rico in the 1960s. So I was raised in the community that I now have the pleasure and the honor to serve as a, on a regular basis, serving as the president and CEO of Sobro. Uh, so, uh, you know, who am I? I am someone who is committed to my org to my community, to my organization, to my people, having ra been raised in a community that when I was growing up was um, very Puerto Rican. You, know, you everybody spoke Spanish. You went to the store. You didn't need to know English to live in the South Bronx when I was growing up. But I also grew up during a time that was really challenging. You know, that was when uh, the South Bronx was seeing all the disinvestment that was happening. The buildings were burning down, the people were leaving, um, but at its core, it was still very much a strong community. So, you know, I had uh, Doña Layo watching me from the corner, you know, uh, Doña uh, Petra watching to make sure that I wasn't in, in areas that my mother didn't want me to be in. Um, so it was very much a community, even though, you know, I always tell people, um, you know, what we know about the South Bronx is what we see in newspapers and in movies and how it is represented. But what's always missing from that representation is how much of a community it was where neighbors, new neighbors, we looked out for each other. We looked out for each other's children. And I, I think that's really what has served me to and, and really inspired me to serve my community. So even though uh, the community that I grew up in, which is, was very Puerto Rican in the 1970s, has now, like many places, changed and evolved and grown um, demographically, geographically. You see uh, a lot of folks from the African diaspora that are now in the Bronx. Um, a lot of the Dominicanos have joined us here in the Bronx. Um, it's really changed, but at its core, it always remains the same. It's a community. It's very much a community. And I think that that has really served as my foundation and really, um, I think, has has really inspired my work professionally and really brought me back full circle. Now working at Sobro, working, you know, literally seven blocks away from the neighborhood that I grew up in, working at this amazing nonprofit organization that was established in the 1970s. It was established in 1972, which was the time that I was living in that community. So, so I've grown up with Sobro uh, being part of my community as well. And so, again, it's really an honor for me to be able to work at an organization that, that has really helped evolve the community that I love so much. And I want to applaud you, everyone. I don't know if uh, a lot of people would not know your background. You were... Um, you have been a very influential to many Latinas. You've paved the way to so many of us, not only with Sobro, 
Lourdes, and I see you as someone that is an example that simplifies uh, the professional growth. And not only professional growth, but a Latina that has really escalated the corporate ladder in every shape and form, not only from a nonprofit level, but also from the political um, and the governmental level as well. And I want everyone, I soon will bring you into Bella Fashionista so you can share your incredible story. Well, <laughs> that's the other stuff that I've been up to, right? So, um, yeah, thank you for that, Clarissa. I mean, I think, again, it's, it's always a passion to work with the Black and Brown community. So in addition to, and, and actually before I got to Sobro, I had served as the chief diversity officer uh, other, under Governor Cuomo. And what that means is that I was um, asked by the governor to work under his leadership to increase the representation of women and of Latinos and of African Americans and really, you know, people across every uh, area and community that that is traditionally underrepresented, the LGBT community, the disabled community, um, and increase their representation in state government, uh, in leadership positions throughout state government. So I was really honored to be asked to serve in that role, developing policy, developing laws. Um, and before that, I had been working as the executive director of the Minority and Women's Business Development Program for the state. So that's how I think I first came to the attention of the governor who asked me to, to come on as CDO. So I spent a good amount of time in state service working for the governor's office, uh, helping minority and women-owned businesses access opportunities, uh, increase their, their ability to be competitive in the business market. Uh, so that's been uh, my most recent career trajectory. And, and prior to that, again, just working within the nonprofit sector, within local governments, um, but always with an eye on urban redevelopment, uh, primarily serving low income communities and communities of color. So that's kind of been the one constant in my professional uh, career. I was very honored uh, by the governor to have been asked to serve in his uh, task force uh, as as the state looked at reopening the state of New York uh, under the COVID uh, pandemic. And, and of course, when the governor taps you on the shoulder and says, I need you to work on this, you say, OK, I, you know, I don't work for you anymore, <laughs> but OK, I will do, you know, because it's always about service and serving the people of New York. And um, and then the mayor asked me to do the same, to serve on the small business committee to work on reopening uh, on the task force. So I've been fortunate in my professional life to not just serve my community, but also to uh, get to know and establish relationships with policymakers, with elected officials, um, all of whom, especially those whom share our collective goal, which is to help our community constantly. Could you tell us more about what is Sobro? So I mentioned that Sobro was established in 1972. So originally the mission of the organization was to help uh, businesses that were being impacted by what was happening in the community at that time. So we were very focused originally on businesses and how to expand businesses, how to develop uh, the capacity of businesses. But like all things, as the community grows and as the needs change, the organization evolved to help address the needs that were coming up. So what that meant was that whereas originally we started with business development, we then expanded to provide workforce training and education for our residents. So people who are looking for jobs, who are looking for training, who are looking for educational opportunities, we started to develop some programming and some models to help address those needs within our community. We recognized that we couldn't just stop with the adults. Our young people also needed those kinds of services. And so we have a very, we developed that model. And then we now have a very uh, significant youth programming uh, division within our unit. So we are in the schools. We are in local schools, everything from k kindergarten through 12th grade. We are in the schools providing homework help, tutoring assistance, arts programming. Um, we also have after school programming. We have a summer youth employment program where we work with young people over the summer. And then we help young people that are looking to get their high school equivalency, what used to be called a GED, now it's called HSCs. And so we have some programming there to help our young people get their HSCs. So we've got the businesses, we have city, state, and federal programming, uh, fun funded programming. 
to help our businesses, everything from entrepreneurs, people who are looking to start a business. If you need some advice on how to do that, we can help you. Um, if you're an established business, you want to get certified as a minority owned business, or you need some help in figuring out how to uh, broaden your, your business base, we can do that as well. And if you're a very well-established business and you still need some help, you know, how do I navigate the city bureaucracy with licensing or, or traffic issues that I might be facing? Or how do I access capital? Uh, we have some programming available as well. So that's kind of the core function. And then again, we've got the workforce and the youth. And then most recently, uh, and by most recently, I mean within the last 20 years, we also moved into affordable housing development and management. So uh, over the years, Sobro has developed about 1,500 units of housing, um, primarily affordable. So we're serving the low-income population. Uh, we also have some uh, special needs housing where we serve people who are impacted by HIV mm -hmm. or mental health or substance abuse needs. So we have some uh, residential houses that also have on-site social services. So we've got social workers on the, on our staff that help our um, residents uh, with their challenges. And, and then we've also expanded into Harlem. So even though we are a Bronx-based organization, we have some properties and some projects in Harlem as well. Today, we own and manage about 450 units of housing. COVID has impacted every industry every organization, every company. Could you tell us more about how has Sobro pivoted throughout this time? Now, to your point about COVID and how that had to shift, um, like everyone else, uh, Sobro has had our offices closed since March 18th. Um, so we have had to shift everything to remote services. Um, you know, first and foremost, our priority was the health and safety of our residents, of course. Uh, we have, as I said, oh, you know, 450 units of housing. We had to make sure that our um, that our buildings were safe, that they were clean, that for, especially for our social services residents that have um, underlying health conditions, we want to make sure that they were safe. So we spent a significant amount of time um, getting up to speed as quickly as we possibly can on, on what the CDC recommended, what the city recommended in the state to make sure that we were keeping our residents safe. Um, and then secondly, shifting all of our programming online. So we um, quickly moved to remote learning. You know, the, the New York City Public Schools closed March, uh, I think it was March 17th. So all of our school-based programming had to shift to online. Um, and so very quickly, we had to establish platforms to use, um, electronic platforms, uh, Google Docs and Zooms and YouTube um, uh, classes. Uh, to continue our services. And we were still able to serve about 400 students um, before the school year ended. Uh, on the business services side, we had a lot of businesses that were incredibly uh, deeply impacted by the closing in the city of New York and needed assistance with understanding what the federal programs were um, to help them uh, get loans and get grants wherever possible. And so we had to shift all of those services for online. So really, just like everyone just had to um, very quickly pivot and, and figure out how do we continue as best we can in an uninterrupted basis, providing the services to the community. And, and I think we've done um, I think we've done a pretty good job of that and, and um, really pleased with what we've been able to accomplish um, in a very difficult time. We will take a quick break. And when we return, Lourdes will provide the programs and resources provided by Sobro. Don't go anywhere. We built a media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the Hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx on Bronxnet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at Bronxnet.tv. Learn. Engage. Inspire. Bronxnet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> Bronxnet. <laughs> Please tell us more about the resources uh, that Sobro has uh, has been provided um, post-COVID to small businesses. So as I mentioned before, so we have a really broad menu of services for our businesses. So let's just start, um, and, and, this, and the services are available to businesses no matter what your size. So we can start with entrepreneurs. So if you're someone that has an idea about a business and they'd like to start a business 
and they're trying to figure out, you know, what do I need to do? How do I create a corporation? How do I get some classes? How do I develop a business plan? How do I find out what resources are available for businesses? We have a, a very strong entrepreneurial assistance program that's funded by the state, Empire State Development, and they provide us with funding to provide these services to people that are looking to start a business. Or maybe you currently have a business, a home-based business, where you're a baker and you sell cookies and you want to figure out how you can expand that business and, and uh, do more with what it is that uh, you've been successfully doing so far. So we can provide you those kinds of skills and help you understand how you can broaden uh, the work that you're doing and get that business up and running. So, um, and we also provide those services in English and in Spanish. So uh, for our Spanish speaking uh, community members that would like to have those services, we can teach the classes in Spanish. We can also provide the technical assistance in Spanish as well. So um, that's certainly a service that we're really proud of being able to deliver. For businesses that have been in business for a number of years, we have a procurement technical assistance center. And what that group does is they help businesses that are interested in contracting with the city and with the state and with the federal government. Uh, we help them understand how to get that process started. If you find bids that you're interested in going after, we can help you interpret that documentation, help you put together a competitive package, help you understand what the requirements are contractually in order to work with the city and the state and the federal government, which can be challenging and overwhelming to folks that haven't done it before. So we have staff on, uh, on hand already that can help you understand that process. That group also can help you as I said earlier, get your MWBE certification if you're a minority or woman-owned business. They can help you get uh, certified with the city and with the state. If you are a larger business uh, that may be located within one of our industrial business zones in the Bronx, there are five industrial business zones located in Zurica, uh, Eastchester, Bathgate, Port Morris, and Hunts Point, and Sobro is the designated IBZ provider, industrial business zone provider. So businesses that are located within any of these zones can get enhanced technical assistance as well. And then lastly, we have a minority business center that works with large scale businesses um, that have been uh, you know, in operation for a number of years. And they may be interested in import export and how do I get started in that process? So again, we've got programs that serve businesses no matter what the size, and more importantly, they're all free. There are no charges for any of those services. Um, and so folks that own a business or would like to own a business, please do contact us for those services and that support. That is amazing, especially for the uh, for the small business owners in the, in the borough of the Bronx. Well, we serve, some programs are Bronx specific. So the industrial business zone program that I mentioned um, focuses on the Bronx, the entrepreneurial services focus on the Bronx, but the procurement services are citywide and the minority business center programmings are actually um, regional. So we can serve businesses in Connecticut, New Jersey as well, although as always, we like to focus our services in our community of the Bronx. What are the additional services that you provide and resources to, to the youth and to those uh, that would like to learn more information on, the, on housing, but for the most part, the workforce. One of the, the reasons why the workforce is such an important component for us is because we tie it to our business services. So when we work with our businesses and we understand that they need to hire people, which has happened quite often, we may be working with a business um, located in Port Morris that says, you know what, we need drivers. We need people with CDL licenses. Well, Sobro has a CDL training program where we help people get their CDL licenses. And we've gotten some funding to provide those services as well. Um, so we tie, we always try to tie our workforce programming to our business uh, services model so that if we get businesses that have needs through our workforce, we can help do that. So people that are looking for work, um, that may be looking for training. So we've done training again around CDL, but also uh, for security, if they wanna train to be a security guard, we can help provide them the training and, and help them get their license to be a security guard. And then once they've done that, we help get them jobs. So our workforce development piece is really important. Our youth programming, as I mentioned earlier as well, um, again, it's school-based, but after school, we are in the process right now 
of talking uh, to the city of New York about reestablishing the summer youth employment program. Um, I'm sure many people heard that the uh, the current budget with the city of New York proposed to cut all of the summer youth programming for our young people. And Sobro um, was one of a, quite a number of nonprofit organizations that spent a significant significant amount of time lobbying our elected officials and trying to make um, the mayor and, and the city government understand how critical it is for our young people to be able to have jobs over the summer. And I'm really pleased that the uh, the city council reinstated some of that funding. And so Sobro is now talking to the city about how we can do, in a, although in a smaller scale, but still try to provide some of those services for our young people. And, and again, helping those that want to get training and want to get education and want to get their high school equivalency program. And then lastly, on our housing side, again, we have units of housing um, located throughout the Bronx and in Harlem, um, about 450 units. So they, uh, for individuals that are looking for housing opportunities, we take applications for our housing units. Um, they all have certain requirements that have been established based on the funder. So uh, again, our special needs, you have to meet the criteria uh, for special needs housing for our uh, affordable but not special needs housing. Um, you do have to meet certain income thresholds that we can walk folks through. Uh, but again, we encourage people that are looking for apartments, um, affordable apartments, to reach out to us. And if we can't help you find an apartment, we also have relationships with a number of, of uh, other affordable housing developers. And so if we can't help you, we'll most certainly do our best to, to find some other resources for you. For those uh, youth development programs that you have, are you did say earlier, I believe, that some of those programs have been transferred into the virtual. Now, as uh, how are you able to match students with, with potential internships? That's a great question, and I think that's something we're still all trying to figure out, right? Um, I think on the educational side, it's it's fairly simple. On the remote work side, we're still you know, we're all still trying to figure this out. We just found out that the program was going to be reinstated about a week ago. So we're, we're still coming up with creative opportunities and reaching out to our business partners to figure out what internships we can provide. We actually have hired some of our own um, uh, young people to work at Sobro uh, through the Summer Youth Employment Program, helping us remotely uh, with file management, uh, with, uh, you know, some of our outreach work that we need to get done. So, um, you know, it's all still a work in progress for us trying to figure out how we can create meaningful programming for our young people um, that can work with us over the summer. Um, the summer youth program right now, I think they're envisioning some of it being in person as well as remote. So again, we're actually having calls this afternoon. So as we speak, we're building the program. So I wish I can tell you a whole lot more <laughs> that we've got it all figured out, but um, I think, you know, that that's part of the requirement for us and, and really for all nonprofits in the city to to really think about creatively how we can meet the needs and the goals of the program and serve our kids um, in this new normal that we're all facing. What are the industry focus of these partners for the youth uh, potential virtual internships or opportunities? Well, our main partner is always um, the city, right? So it's DYCD, the Division of Youth and Community Development, but we've got partners such as the cons uh, Consortium for Worker Education. Uh, we've got various colleges that we work with as well. So, you know, we work with other nonprofit organizations. Um, uh, Sustainable South Bronx has been a group that we've done a lot of work with. Nos Quedamos is another group. So we're always looking uh, at partners, looking at other groups that we can tap into for uh, for mutual sharing and mutual support. Can we support them? Can they support us in, in helping us? I mean, I, I did want to just back up a little bit on the summer youth programming. I think everything that you said about the need is, is absolutely right and it's absolutely on target. Um, but I do think also one of the points that we wanted to make to our elected officials is that, you know, many of the kids under summer youth employment program um, come from low-income families. And so mm -hmm. having a job over the summer is not just walking around money. This is money that young people need um, so that they can get resources for when school reopens, whether it's clothing or school supplies, um, or they get money to help support their families over the summer. So uh, again, the, the summer youth employment program really was critical and really is critical 
for our young people in, in being able to provide some level of economic support and resources to the kids that need it the most. It's not just a summer program to keep kids busy. Uh, okay. It really is, in many cases, programming that is and that is just life or death and, and, and critical economically for our communities of color and our low-income communities. And you know, to your point on the mental health side, when you've got uh, the conditions that we're all facing right now, and you close the beaches, you close the schools, you close the parks, and you don't have jobs, you know, it really leaves question: what What are our young people going to be doing with themselves? when it's hot outside and there's nothing, nothing to do. So it was just really, I thought, you know, a really critical juncture for all of us. And so I'm really pleased and, and immensely grateful to the council and to the mayor for reinstating those programmings for the summer. Where are these internships allocated into corporations, into companies? What type of, of positions is it that you and your organization are, are able to match them? We start in the in the private sector, of course, uh, where we can find whether it's retailers or corporations that can take on some of our young people uh, for employment over the summer. That's that's where we always start. But of course, then again, we also deal with nonprofits. And in terms of the work that's being done, I think, again, um, you know, a lot of it remains to be seen. A lot of it, you know, administratively, that really lends itself to Mm -hmm. online work. Uh, so, so that's something, you know, administrative support is something that we're going to take a look at for sure with our young people, um, to the extent that we can do some sort of remote learning, whether it's having older kids tutor younger kids, um, that may be some programming that we put into place, uh, some sort of media production, internships, computer-based learning. Those are all the industries that were, are kind of our immediate target for some remote learning opportunities. But again, given the, the evolving nature of the work that we're doing, uh, we're still kind of figuring out where, where the opportunities lie and how we can bring it all to bear and, and bring those resources locally. Could you tell us more about the opportunities for senior citizens? So our affordable housing work is, is not necessarily targeted to seniors, um, although obviously we do have seniors living in our residences and we do have some properties that really lend themselves elevator buildings, um, buildings with small units. One of the projects I'm especially excited about, however, is that we are in the process of pursuing a larger uh, program uh, for that NYCHA is putting out with one of our partners to specifically develop senior housing. And so we're looking at the opportunity to, to develop senior housing on NYCHA-owned property. Um, and that will be about 200 units targeted to seniors. So that's going to be a new element for the work that we've been doing. So I'm really excited about that. And and looking at how we can, you know, again, it's all about evolution and change, right? We have to make sure that we're we're working and that we're providing for our community what the needs are. And so, you know, we're always looking for partners. We're always talking to folks. Um, I'm very excited and very interested in broadening the affordable housing uh, portfolio that we currently have. And so I'm always engaged in one conversation or another with developers and really promoting the work that Sober does and and always open and looking to establish partnerships with uh, folks that can come in and help us realize that vision for the organization, which is not just providing all these other services, but really serving the, the fundamental need that everybody has, right? To have a good place to live, a high quality and clean and safe uh, place for people to live on a regular basis. And so uh, we're looking at and increasing that work and, and seniors are most definitely one of those populations that we want to look at serving. Where can we find out more information about Sobro and their services and how can we contact you? For any information on any of these programs that we have, please check our website. We're at Sobro.org. It's S-O-B-R-O.org. If you'd like some information, specific information about any of the programs that I've talked about, you can email us at info at Sobro.org. And that's actually an email that comes right to my mailbox. Uh, So I see all of those requests. And then I make sure that I follow up with uh, my my staff and make sure that that the right people are are getting uh, your questions answered. Our phone number is 718-292-3113. We are trying our best to check uh, emails now, even though we are still 
formally close for the immediate future, but um, you can certainly try that number once we reopen. And we're at 732 if you'd like to leave a message for us. And that is an email that we, that is a phone number that we check on a regular basis. So again, we are here. We are community-based. We have been here for almost 50 years. Uh, my goal is to see us here for another 50 years. I may not see the next 50 years, but um, certainly make sure that, that we're continuing to provide services to this community that I love so much. Thank you for being such a great example in our community. Well, thank you so much, Flavisa, first and foremost, for, for giving me this opportunity to talk to you and to your audience. It's really been my pleasure and my honor. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to follow us on social media at Bellas Fashionistas and our media partner at Bugsnet TV. To watch more of our programming, please visit our websites at bellasfashionistas.com and also our media partner at bronxnet.org. Please be safe. Have a great day. Oh, 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 oh,